Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Matter. And I'm Scott Dennis. Our top story tonight, local teachers and administrators are weighing in on the possibility of arming school staff. One of the ideas brought up following last week's shooting in Broward County. While some students and teachers say they'd feel safer if school staff members were armed, others say it's the wrong answer in stopping school gun violence. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick joins us live at Booker Elementary School to explain how Suncoast teachers are feeling about this issue. Jess? Jacqueline Scott, unfortunately, this isn't a new issue. Since Columbine happened, both Sarasota and Manatee County schools have talked about the possibility of arming teachers, but it's never happened. Now that another mass shooting has taken the lives of dozens of students, it's in the local conversation once again. We don't need more guns. We need more education. Former Sarasota administrator Paul Gallagher feels strongly that arming school teachers isn't practical. We're finding more and more in our society um, police officers, for instance, who are our most highly trained professionals with guns, uh, frequently misuse them, uh, need to be retrained. Can you imagine educators being trained and retrained and supervised with something like this? The Manatee Education Association taking the same stance. It seems like a cheap, quick answer. But President Pat Barber says this is a reactionary possible solution, not a logical one. Their role in the schools is not to be an armed guard. Um, their role is something completely different, and this is not one more thing that needs to be layered on to our educators. NRA panel attorney Ron Chapman says armed teachers would be voluntary, meaning not every teacher would have to carry a gun. And then they could put them through uh, appropriate courses, modified courses that would teach them in how to use the weapon, uh, how to isolate their targets, how to shoot the weapon, how to protect the individuals that they're with. I don't think that training would, would cost that much or take that long. Chapman argues that because of those crucial minutes that it takes for law enforcement to respond in an active shooter situation, arming teachers could save lives. If you arm uh, teachers, arm security personnel, uh, that are on campus that are there that can respond immediately, you could potentially take out a shooter well before they reach the havoc that they've been reaching, you know, in the latest uh, school shootings. It's a situation that both sides aren't likely to see eye to eye on, but it is a conversation that's continuing to happen. I asked Attorney Chapman how he recommends teachers keep these guns out of the hands of anyone who could get a hold of them. He says that these teachers should always have them on them just in case of an emergency. He also suggests that teachers go through not only background checks, but also mental health evaluations before they're armed. Reporting live in Sarasota, Jess Dowdrick, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, Jess, thank you. President Trump and teachers are weighing in on this issue all across the country. The president tweeting, quote, highly trained gun adept teachers and coaches would solve the problem instantly. Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi compares armed teachers in schools to sky marshals and planes, but the teachers themselves are divided. Former FBI agent and ABC consultant Brad Garrett says there's an emotional appeal to arming teachers, but it's time for a reality check. Their job is not to be a combat shooter like a SWAT team. We have to get away from the stereotype that an armed teacher is going to take down a mass shooter. Tangibleness of a gun in your hand is real. But the question is, is it the best place for that gun to be? The National Education Association overwhelmingly rejects the idea of arming school staff, saying in part our students need more books, art programs, and counselors. They do not need more guns. Here on the Sun Coast, Bayshore High School was placed on lockdown today after an alleged threat. Manatee County Sheriff's deputies say that threat was made on social media and they are now working with school officials to investigate. The lockdown started around 1030 this morning and was later changed to a shelter in place. Bayshore sent out a robocall to parents to let them know what was happening. We will continue to bring you more details on this ongoing investigation when it becomes available. A 13-year-old Nolan Middle School student has been charged with making threats to the Bradenton School. Several other students came forward to say the 13-year-old made verbal threats toward them. This comes after Southeast High School went on lockdown yesterday morning as deputies investigated threats found written on a bathroom wall. 
Remember, for the latest on local efforts to keep Suncoast students safe, as well as breaking news, you can download our new app. Just go to the App Store and look for WWSB or My Suncoast. Well, another warm and great beach day here on the Sun Coast. So let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Thanks and good evening, everyone. We're looking at another nice evening uh, with uh, generally fair skies. The GO-16 satellite imagery, which is the latest and greatest satellite, used to be Gozer, but now GO-16 is in its right position in orbit, uh, showing the southeasterly wind flow, a little bit more cloudiness down to our south, and had even a few spotty showers down there. But uh, for the time being, not much going on with the satellite imagery, and if you're wondering about GOES 17, well, it's GOES S, and it'll be launched from the Cape at 5.03 next Thursday, so March 1st. Mark that in your calendar. Hopefully the weather will cooperate like it has been. 78 degrees right now, some clouds around, and the dew point temperature is 69. The sea breeze has just kicked in within the last hour. Winds have been out of the east-southeast, so we are not going to see a record. And just about 15 to 20 minutes ago, that temperature was at 86 degrees, so a big turnaround once the sea breeze develops and the pressure now 30, 29, and that is up there and continues to uh, stay strong. Uh, 81 in uh, Orlando now, 79 in Miami, uh, 80 degrees into Key West, and the evening planner looks to be pretty nice. If you have any plans outdoors, should not be an issue at all with our weather. 71 by 11 o'clock tonight, and as far as the Bay Cam goes and Sarasota Bay from the Van Wazel showing flat calm conditions out there out on the waters, and it'll stay that way too for boaters right through the weekend. We'll have that weekend forecast coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. There are two sides to students making threats of violence against schools, and tonight local mentors have a message for kids on the other end. As ABC 7's Adam Cellini sh shows us, there are options for students in our area who feel confused, angry, or scared by the tragedy in Parkland. One week after the tragedy down in Parkland, seven students on the Sun Coast have been arrested for threats of violence against a local school. Law enforcement has been clear that these actions carry a heavy consequence, but what do they say about the students behind them? Some experts in the area who work closely with troubled students say it could be something deeper, and they have a message for those thinking of pushing the boundary. What they tell me, they're scared. Clinical psychologist Eddie Renier is not surprised by the recent threats at schools. While some kids run away from fear, these kids, he believes, are doing the opposite. Others run towards the danger. They want to mimic the very thing that they're afraid of. Renier, who specializes in child psychology, says deciphering credible threats is the first and most difficult task. Then try to talk with the student on the other end. Renier will often break the ice by admitting his own fears. He says adults are wrong to think they can protect innocence by hiding their own emotions. If your child is really not concerned about this and you bring it up, all they'll do, they just ignore you. They'll go about their way and you know to drop it. Uh, but if they are concerned about it, they'll, they'll tell you immediately the moment you open the door. So the worst a parent could do is be silent. Or maybe let a mentor like Mike Hagan listen. Mentorship programs are available at most area schools. As a mentor, you have no stake in the game. You know, you're not being paid. You're probably the only person that's sitting in front of uh, that kid that's, that's, that has only one interest, and that is theirs. After six years of volunteering with the mentor program, Faces of Accomplishment, here's what he would say to a kid on the verge of a bad decision. Believe in your moral compass, and if, you, if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. There's somebody that cares about you, and there's somebody that cares about your well-being. There's somebody that would help you see a bigger picture than the environment you're in today. There are other resources available for counseling. For a list of some of those resources, you can visit our website, mysuncoast.com. In Sarasota, Adam Cellini, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Okay, thank you so much, Adam. Today, nearly 600 students from St. Martha Catholic School and St. Mary Academy spent the day together for Stream Day. Stream Day celebrates how engineers impact the world and bring, it brings engineering to life for kids, educators, and parents. Throughout the day, students traveled to different stations, experiments, and informative sessions with Sub-Zero ice cream <coughs> and engineers from various firms and businesses throughout the Sarasota area. St. Martha's principal says today was a very important day for her students' futures. We talk about all the different elements of the curriculum, but we're also introducing the students to a collaborative working process and being able to work with people in a team to solve a problem using the resources that we have available to us, which is something that we believe is going to prepare them for careers of the future. Today's event also aimed to inspire girls to one day have a future in engineering. 
ABC 7 Business Commentator Richard Stern joins us now to look at the day on Wall Street and kind of a, a mixed day today. A mixed day. Good day for the Dow all day long. We didn't close at the high, but the NASDAQ, which has been very strong lately, down for the fourth day in a row, first time in 15 months. So, wow. some selling. Some selling on the NASDAQ, I think they also call that profit taking. In any event, there have been plenty of profits to take today. The high of the day, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up by 358 points. We didn't close anywhere near that number, but we did finish with a very solid triple-digit gain, so I think investors will be happy with the results. So let's take a look, and indeed, they look pretty darn good to me. The Dow Jones Industrial Average for the day up 164.70, closing at 24,962.48, up two-thirds of 1% on a volume of 808 million shares. The NASDAQ, as I say, a loser four days in a row, down eight points, just one-tenth of 1%, 7,210.09, that on volume of 1,819,000,000 shares. The S&P, a slight gain, up one-tenth of 1%, not quite three points, at 2,703.96. Well, I don't know if you know the name Bloomin' Brands, but I bet you know a lot of the restaurants the company owns. How about Outback Steakhouse? Familiar with that? How about Fleming's and Carrabba's and Bonefish Grill? Bloomin' Brands, which is based in Tampa, does own all four of those, and today made an announcement that made a lot of investors very happy. The company had been struggling, and actually last year in the same quarter posted a loss. This year, just the opposite. The company posted a gain for the quarter, both in sales and bottom line, and the stock has acted very well up today and up 17% in the last 12 months. So that's a pretty darn good performance. Uh, the market's certainly been strong, but good to see Bloomin' Brands named after Bloomin' Onion, right? <laughs> there you go. That that's, makes sense. There you go. Well, what about any news for us on Boeing? Just terrific. Boeing up today, up 1% today, and of the 30 stocks that make up the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that is one up 21% year-to-date, and it's 22nd of February. Not wow. bad. All right. Thank you so much, Richard. You're very welcome. Still to come in your Suncoast News tonight, police in Connecticut are investigating and for a man crashes his car into a hospital emergency room and then sets himself on fire. And Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast, plus why chest pain could be a serious and dangerous issue in women. The ABC7 Stock Report is sponsored by Sunset Cadillac. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. From small starts come some big things. I'm Stephanie Roberts. On Suncoast View, we'll meet a Suncoast cheerleading team that went from practicing in a home garage to placing in a national competition. You'll love these girls' spunk. The art scene is alive and thriving in Bradenton. We'll get a lesson in jewelry making from Art Center Manatee, plus Makeover Madness and Oak and Stone joins us in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama black belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, fishing, or biking and hiking or play the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy the flavors of the Black Belt. Book your adventure at our lodges or stay in the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama Black Belt adventure today. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. 
Head over to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota, where you'll always get better prices and a bigger selection. Like the area's largest selection of new 2018 Jeep Wrangler JLs in stock now. Or get the most awarded SUV of all time, a new Jeep Cherokee, for as little as $19,999. Find the path to your next great adventure in the all-new Jeep Compass for just $18,999. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. If you're looking for a rewarding job you'll love, good news. The perfect job is just a click away. Go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day. It's that easy. Stop searching and go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to find the perfect job for you. In national news, a man is in critical condition after crashing his car into a Connecticut hospital and then setting himself on fire. It happened at the emergency room entrance at Middlesex Hospital in Middletown. The town's mayor said it was a deliberate act and that there were gas cans in the vehicle. The 27-year-old driver is in critical condition. Police say he has a long criminal history, but don't know his motivation for what happened today. Severe weather continues across the country, causing accidents and evacuations. More freezing drizzle overnight caused roads across the Oklahoma City area to become slick, making cars slide across the roads, becoming a major hazard for drivers. A fire truck even lost control and flipped over in that same area. And video shows just how bad the flooding is around Lansing, Michigan, where a state of emergency has been declared. The flooding there leaving homes and businesses underwater. The Red Cedar River now about five feet past flood stage, but could reach 10 feet before it's expected to recede. Several neighborhoods have been evacuated. Volunteers have been going door to door to make sure everyone gets out safely. Shelters have also been set up for those leaving their homes. And several horses that were trapped in floodwaters are now doing okay. Rescue crews in Lake Station, Indiana, about 35 miles southeast of Chicago, used boats to reach the three horses and a llama. Nine different horses were also rescued at a nearby stable. The owner said rescue crews had to wade through five feet of water to pull those horses to safety. Fortunately, more rain is expected this weekend in that area, which could mean more flooding as well. And Bob, you were telling us yesterday, you talked about that training effect, or it's just this yeah. going over the same area. And it's a result of that high pressure ridge. Everything's kind of working its way around it, and that moisture is coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. So it's not quite over yet. There's more rain on the way for some areas across parts of the lower Mississippi Valley and throughout the uh, western portion of Tennessee. None of that coming our way, unfortunately. We could use a little bit of rainfall here. And look at this gorgeous shot sent in today from Rick uh, near Fruitville and Otteray. This is a Sarasota crepuscular rays right there as the sun uh, moving through that cumulus cloud that never built up to anything significant to bring us some relief as far as the pollen count goes. We could use a little bit of rainfall around here to clear things out, but the uh, beach growers are saying, no, we don't want any of that because uh, the beach weather has been absolutely outstanding uh, for this past week and a half now. And also uh, for golfers out there hitting the ball around, no problems with any kind of uh, delays or tee time uh, cancellation as a result of cold weather or rainfall uh, this month for the most part. You can see that rain continuing now. It's lessening somewhat, weakening, but there's a little piece of energy, again, gathering some strength over Oklahoma, Arkansas, and the Missouri tonight. This will kind of rotate and bring that frontal boundary and keep it right there where more moisture will feed in from the Gulf of Mexico and cause all sorts of problems with flooding. And that flooding again occurring now in East Texas, all the way over to Shreveport and into Louisiana, stretching off into Southwest Arkansas. Now this again, military exercise, but embedded in with inside this, there are a few legitimate showers down there, uh, very light rain showers, but you'll see nothing very active at all in terms of uh, rainfall as a result of the dry air that's in place in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And it looks like uh, with that subsidence or sinking of the air and compression heating, it's called, we're gonna continue to see uh, this dry air in place and little chance for any significant rainfall. 78 right now. We talked about it just a minute ago. It's turned around from 86 to 87 in just 20 minutes as that sea breeze has now kicked in at 10 miles an hour. And as far as coastal temperatures go, those are now seeing a little bit cooler readings there. 76 in Holmes Beach, about 83 at Rosedale, Waterleaf at 84, Parish the same, and Laurel Oak at 83 degrees, Siesta Key at 82, and Seabreeze not quite active yet down here in south into uh, Plantation, it's 83, Northport 83 degrees, and the same in Port Charlotte. Well, future cast, it will show once in a while an isolated shower rotating around this ridge, which is centered now off the Carolina coast, and with that east to southeast really wind flow, we'll continue to see temperatures into the mid 80s uh, for the most part right through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Maybe just a few degrees cooler than it has been, but we're really not looking at any significant cold front coming through. As long as this trough of low pressure stays out west, 
and the ridging continues to uh, stay strong on the eastern third of the nation. We're not looking for any storm system to sweep any fronts our way uh, within the next seven days. Right now, the temperatures have backed off a little bit from the extreme cold over the northern Plains states, but they'll be back somewhat tomorrow. 34 in Cleveland. Uh, just a couple days ago, it was 72 there, so things have cooled in Ohio. And 50 degrees in, in Washington, they were up to 80 just two days ago. And then tomorrow's high temperatures into the teens there over the northern plains, into Montana and into North Dakota. Toronto, you'll see a high pretty nice there, 44, 52 in Detroit. So for boaters tomorrow, east winds will be at 10 knots to start the morning off and then subside to 5 knots in the afternoon. Seas running 1 to 2 feet with a light chop out there. The water temperature... Warm temp, 74. The beaches will see a high right around 81 degrees. And as far as the forecast goes for tonight, a little bit of fog, but not much. Generally fair, low temperatures into the upper 60s near the beaches, mid 60s elsewhere. So if you're away from the water, we'll be right around 64, 65 degrees. And then partly cloudy to start the day off tomorrow. Warm again, high temperature 87. Uh, near the coastline, we'll see temperatures, as I mentioned, near the beaches right around 81, 82 degrees. And east winds at 5 to 10. The extended forecast then, Warm weather, 80s, uh, just a little bit cooler as we head into March 1st on Thursday. 79 degrees then, a 20% chance for a passing shower comes mainly Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday as maybe a little bit more moisture tries to work its way in our way. Uh, but temperatures for lows running about 10 to 12 degrees above average. Same old song and dance. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. In first alert traffic, we have reports of a crash at I-75 and State Road 70. You can see traffic is all backed up on the northbound lanes of I-75 at this hour, both before that interchange and beyond. So slow going this hour. Jacqueline. Thanks, Scott. In health news tonight, chest pain could mean many things, including acid reflux, muscle pain, anxiety, and much more. But for women, chest pain could spell bigger trouble, unforeseen trouble. With more, here's ABC's Arlette Signs. When men have chest pain, doctors look for blocked coronary arteries. It's a major heart attack risk factor. Those arteries carry blood to different parts of the heart itself to nourish it. But chest pain may play a more important role in women. A new study looked at 340 women who had had their hearts looked at with MRI scans. They found 8% of women had scars on their heart muscles, one sign of a past heart attack. But one third of these women had never been diagnosed. Why the underdiagnosis? Researchers say that women with chest pain could be having a problem in tiny vessels around the heart that are not caught by typical tests. But it's a heart attack nonetheless. With this Medical Minute, I'm Arlette Signs, ABC News. Next flu season, you'll be able to get your vaccine without a needle. Flu mist, the nasal spray influenza vaccine, has been approved for the 2018-2019 season. It's been off the market for two years because of its poor performance compared to the flu shot. But the company that makes the drug says it has reformulated the vaccine, has tested it in 200 kids, and suggests it works better now. The advisory committee that decides which vaccines are available on the U.S. market also agreed. And you may not think about it, but every day we do things that can actually damage our teeth. A dental expert says there are foods and drinks that pose some of the biggest threats to your teeth, and it's not just desserts, candy, and soda. Foods and drinks that are high in starch or refined carbohydrates, such as pasta, white rice, and refined cereals, can cause plaque buildup that can lead to cavities. Also, chewing ice, hard candy, pens, fingernails, or using your teeth to open packages can be harmful because you can break or chip a tooth. Clenching your jaw can wear down your teeth and gums over time, as well as brushing your teeth too aggressively. The dental expert says you should develop a good relationship with a dentist and hygienist that you trust and see them routinely. Coming up, a road rage incident caught on camera spills into a busy intersection, and a police officer makes a miraculous catch that saves a child's life. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Minnesota's only area rug superstore. 
Sarasota Opera's 2018 Winter Opera Festival is here, featuring Puccini's Manon Lescaut, Bizet's Carmen, Bellini's Norma, and Dalbert's rarely heard Tiflant. For more information, go to sarasotaopera.org. My name is Stefan Campagna, we're Ben Gates and Dramas, and here is your Law Tip of the Week. If you've been arrested in the state of Florida, the state attorney's office is already working on your prosecution. It's time to work on your defense. So give us a call, we've got your back. If you've never truly loved your car, you've clearly never owned a Subaru. Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's 2017 most trusted brand, best overall brand, and lowest five-year cost to own. And Subaru Outback is an IIHS top safety pick for 10 years running. Now, lease the most fuel-efficient vehicle in its class, a new Subaru Outback for just $2.39 a month, or get 0% financing with zero down during the Subaru True Love event. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. My name is Haley. I have fragile X syndrome. I work with Chartwells at Einstein's at FAU. I like being up front and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.com employflorida.com This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Watch Good Morning Suncoast on ABC7, weekdays starting at 5. A case of road rage put innocent drivers at risk in Stewart on Florida's east coast. Reported by another driver Tuesday afternoon, it shows a car and a minivan heading down a highway. We don't see what leads up to all of this, but the car appears to be driving slow in front of the minivan, even jumping in front of it when the van tries uh, when the driver tries to change lanes. Well, the two cars get to an intersection, three men immediately get out, and then the brawl starts right there in the middle of the road. Stewart police say the men in the car who drove away at the end of the fight were arrested just down the road. An Egyptian police officer saving a child's life this past weekend and the miraculous save was all caught on camera. The officer caught a five year old boy just in time as he fell from a third floor balcony in central Egypt. Take a look right there. That surveillance video shows the moment that child astonishingly landed right in the officer's arms and actually knocking him down. The incident occurred while the officer was guarding a bank. The child was not injured, injured, but the officer did sustain some bruises to his face and was taken to the hospital. Well, everyone knows avocados are tasty and good for you, but who knew they were a great place to hide engagement rings? Didn't know that. <laughs> Jeremy Roth has more in today's Take a Look at This. Avocados are a super popular superfood, and why not? They're super versatile. Guacamole, avocado toast, guacamole, and now engagement ring boxes. Yep, there's a growing trend of people on social media surprising their loved ones with rings inside avocados. Wow, millennials are going full millennial on this one. There's even a hashtag, hashtag avocado proposal. Hey, it's certainly a unique idea that'll make your friends green with envy, but if you wait too long, it'll just make them green. You Take a look at this, a violent dust storm in the Australian state of Queensland. The storm vastly limited visibility and covered the town of Charleville in the southwestern part of the state in orange dust. According to Australia's seven network, wind gusts were recorded at nearly 60 miles per hour. Yikes. Or take a look at this. I'm Jeremy Roth. Well, still to come on your Suncoast News, why Re Venice residents are becoming concerned over construction delays to the new public safety center. And a look at how local doctors are over-prescribing opioid-based pain medications.
thousands of award-winning Honda SUVs are on sale from $189 a month during the Honda President's Day sales event. You've got to see these SUVs. Get a surprisingly spacious 2018 HRV, $189 a month, or step up to Pilot for $289 a month with available seating for eight. Plus, we have Motor Trend's SUV of the Year, the 2018 CRV, and Ridgeline, a car and driver's 10 best, all on sale for up to $3,805 less than the competition at your local Honda dealer. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Loaded with big laughs, colorful characters, and the songs that made the 20s roar, Bullets Over Broadway is bringing musical theater back with a bang. Your attendance is requested at the Player Center for this wild Broadway musical opening February 21st. Call the players at 365-2494 or visit the website at theplayers.org. This is one Broadway show that is sure to knock them dead. Tickets are going fast for My Hometown Fest, Saturday, March 3rd from noon to 5 at Nathan Benderson Park. Enjoy foods from 40 area restaurants, 40 plus craft beers, live music, and lots of fun. Get your tickets today at myhometownfest.org. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new Boys and Girls Club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today. Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking a part-time producer to help on the Suncoast View. Organizational skills, technical knowledge, and dynamic personality required. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply.